Hello and welcome everyone. It is time to enter the Kumi Dam. Remember, this is not a sport. You don't play fight. What's up, fight fans? Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the upcoming fight between Gilbert Burns and Kamza Shumayev. Either man can win this fight, but let's take a closer look at how they may win this fight. Gilbert Burns is coming in as a plus 320 underdog against Kamza Shumayev, coming in as a minus 425 favorite. These odds are something else. The hype behind Kamza Shumayev is going to be really put to the limits because it's on an entirely different level. People really think that Kamzat is going to smish Gilbert Burns. People must have forgot that Gilbert Burns is regarded as one of the greatest BJJ practitioners of all time. He won first place at the IBJJF World Championships in 2011, first place at the IBJJF World Championship Nogi in 2010, first place at the UAE JJF Abu Dhabi World Pro in 2010, and first place in the CBJJ Brazilian Nationals in 2010. So the point here is that Gilbert Burns is one of the best in the world where Kamzat is strongest. I don't think he'll expose Kamzat Shemaev in any way, but I do see him bringing everyone back into reality a bit. He has great sweeps that he gets off of attacking the ankles and collapsing you in. He'll fold you up and use it to get a strong position. He threatens really good leg locks from here as well, so keep that in mind. He has really strong butterfly hooks, and he doesn't force a sweep either. He's very graceful with it. Gilbert Burns is amazing at putting the shoulder lock on people. He may do this to stall them out, threaten the submission with the omoplata or whatever, or possibly give himself an opening to attack the sweep and set himself up to get a seatbelt and go for back control. No matter how you choose to react, the shoulder lock needs to be addressed before you can move on. Look out for the arm bar from Burns in this one. He can land it anywhere, and if Shamayev opens up a bit too much or gets careless or possibly even tired, then we may see him get wrapped up. Shamayev is a phenomenal grappler, but he's up against one of the greatest grapplers to ever walk the earth. I could especially see him threatening an arm bar after scrambling into a position from his leg lock. The positions flow together very well. Let's be honest. Gilbert Burns doesn't have the best chin. Not only that, but he relies heavily on slipping off the center line and countering, particularly with that lead check hook. You could tell in that fight with Usman that once Usman found the timing for the jab, catching him on the offbeat, Burns was getting cut off before he could get something started, and it left him waiting for it. Usman also knew that the slip counter was coming, so he just kept his rear hand up with the jab and would use the jab to neutralize the hook after he threw the jab. Burns started off the fight strong, slipping off the center line and even dropping Usman, but once Usman got the timing and the range, it was game over. If it turns out that Shamayev has a strong and a well-timed jab, then I see it being a long night for Burns. Burns is very dense, but he isn't quite as long as someone like Usman, and especially not Shamayev. Shamayev is huge. This dude could easily be a 205 fighter, but he's here to bully these guys at 170. I could see Burns having a lot of success threatening knees up the middle and uppercuts. This would really help him to make the stronger wrestler feel stuck with him on the feet. He's fast and very explosive, and he isn't worried too much about the takedown, so he feels free to throw anything in the book. If Shamayev has some really heavy wrestling tendencies of changing levels or putting your head down and blocking high, then Burns might find an opening for a knee or an uppercut down the middle. Kamzat Shamayev has had the most dominant UFC run thus far. I mean, we haven't seen this level of dominance from anyone entering the UFC. Anderson Silva was on a tear when he entered, but never have we seen someone averaging one punch per fight. He's fought in two weight classes and hasn't had anyone meet him with anything meaningful. It looks like they're just trying to survive in there with him. These performances have built up Shamayev's height to a level that the number two contender and world BJJ champion is coming in as a plus 320 underdog. This is just unheard of. But we have to keep in mind, guys, that he was fighting the lower tiers of fighters in the UFC. Nothing against these guys that he's come up against, but none of them are Gilbert Burns, Colby Covington, or Kamaru Usman. These matchups are very exciting, and I honestly can't wait to see some of them play out. So we don't have much to go on in terms of how his strengths match up with the best of the best, but the only fight that we can go back and see him face some adversity was against Ikram Aliskarov in Brave FC. Brave has some killer competition, and Aliskarov was a world champion in 2016 and a two-time World Cup champion in 2014 and 2015 and a European champion in 2017 in Combat Sambo. So he's really strong grappling, and, and Kamsat Shemaev couldn't just go in there and ragdoll him. 
even though I'm using him as an example of someone that didn't get steamrolled by Shemayev, he still got knocked out with an uppercut in the first round. So it's really just to show what happens when someone can compete with Shemayev in the grappling. I do see Burns being a more versatile striker, though, than Aliskarov, but we get to see some of Kamzat's habits and mix-ups on the feet. He's got a long and strong jab, and he utilizes feints to mix in with it. This jab worries me for Gilbert Burns. Burns doesn't have the best chin, and if you can't time your strikes, then he mostly ends up just eating it. And we've seen that Shemaya's power is not to be toyed with. Another thing that I see landing on Burns is Shemaya's straight down the center. He does a good job at not telegraphing it, and he has a long reach that he puts out there. Burns is going to have to find a way around that reach. And if he's tagging Burns with the jab and making Burns second-guess himself, then I could honestly see something like this landing. And if something like this does land, then it might be lights out for Burns. Shemaya really likes to tag in a takedown after a body kick, which is somewhat of a new technique that we're seeing in the MMA community, but it's very effective. I don't think Shemayev wants to just go for the takedown. That could be very dangerous to do against a submission artist such as Gilbert Burns. But I do believe that he wants to keep Burns wondering if the takedown is coming. Even if Burns isn't afraid of his wrestling, it gives Burns more things to think about and leaves a potentially bigger opening for the straights and jabs down the center when Burns is waiting to slip for the hook counter. Shemayev's response to Burns' submission attempts, shoulder lock stalling or collapsing him in from his ankles, is likely going to be this put himself out of the lock and step over, alleviate the submission threat and getting himself into side control, maybe getting his arm behind Burns' head and using his knee to cut off the lower half of Burns' body and pulling his base free of any control. So even while I do think Burns is the biggest challenge for Shemaev's grappling, I don't believe for a second that he'll look out of his element. Ultimately though, I'm gonna go with Kamzat Shemaev via second round TKO. I can't believe I'm making this prediction after the odds coming out the way that they have. But I really do see Shemaev's potential being limitless. Um, while he's being rushed to the top, I do think he is deserving. I don't think he'll be smashing Gilbert Burns on the ground. But I do see him landing some powerful shots with Burns' reach disadvantage and habit of, of slipping for the overhand or the hook. Because as the weasel says, straight punches beat looping punches and Shemaev tries to stick to the fundamentals. We still have a lot of unanswered questions as we haven't really seen Shemaev tested yet. We haven't seen him against the best of the best, and we don't have too much tape on him. So I wouldn't be surprised if I'm wrong here, and, and if someone wants to make some money, then this is a good fight to put some down on Burns, um, being such a massive underdog. I guarantee you that after this fight, we're going to have a lot more to go off of in terms of Kamza Shumaya because I really do think that Gilbert Burns is going to take him there. With that, I'll go ahead and wrap things up. If you like the content we're providing, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you disagree with our picks, make sure to berate us down in the comments below. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and you can even follow me personally on Twitter. Remember, this is not a sport if you don't play fight.